welcome back everybody uh, happy new year to everyone this is the first dive of 2023 and I've started a lot later than I normally do I normally get out on the first as they say it's the start of the dive season on the 1st of January but I haven't made it out into the 6th so we're at 21 meters of water and we have got loads of time left at the, uh, this depth so basically we're outside the harbour mouth maybe 250 yards or roundabout um, just behind the ammunition wreck and I'm basically trying to feel my way through the depths and try and head to it and just scallop past it rather than actually exploring it back on the surface we have Richie Keane in Sylvia K and it is pretty poor back on the surface um, thanks a lot Richard for doing the boat for us looks like an old crock pot that's been smashed and thrown over so there's a lot of uh, waste out on this part of the seabed and all these little tiny stones you see this is the the burnt coal out of the steamers they used to bring it out here and tip it and you get the old crab pot this is an upside down inkwell now becoming a bit of a artificial reef for some sponges and sea squirts as you tell it's pretty dark today so i'm apologies i'm quick dipping my camera just because i want to try and see ahead of me um it's that dark if you manage to move the lights out of the way your eyesight gets a bit better it's a big old spiny starfish so there's a well i say a few scallops around here for me it's good good numbers i'll be happy with a 20 or 25 today about five minutes in so i should really be checking my air and there's a little baby scallop here is it big enough no too small we'll leave that one there so there's plenty of bottles out this part of the uh, harbour mouth there's years hundreds of years I should say of people discarding bottles off the side of boats look at this scallop it's got some sort of sea squirt attached to it it's not normal you get sea squirts attached to it you normally get slipper limpets probably say maybe one in five as a slip a limpet on now and they're invasive Richard's dropped us up tide from the shipwreck and we're kind of hoping to drift down past the 25 to 27 metre mark and hopefully bump into the shipwreck not physically but um, metaphorically these are really cool, there's thousands of these as well. Long legged spider crabs. Could spend a long time just messing around with these. And also you see these brittle stars, these sand brittle stars. There's a few of these as well. I'm not sure if I should buy a macro lens. If I buy a macro lens, I'll be able to get in a lot closer. If you want me to buy a macro lens, just comment in the um, in the comments see if I should get one here's another one a tiny brittle star so I'm just taking a rest now to see if I can see the shipwreck it's just too dark out ahead of me so plenty of bottles around here in fact some of the bottles are quite nice bottles that one's got some rust coral attached to it so it's been there a while look on the left here you can see there's all scrape marks and stuff this is means um, basically other divers have been passed here or a map pool must have passed through here just before me just enough tide to carry away the dust and some more fishing gear looks like it was a, sh a crab pot of some sort this is quite interesting this is a parasitic sea anemone you can find them in all sorts of places, normally attached to bits of hard surfaces or maybe rocks. Oh, in this case it's actually attached to a hermit crab. That's quite normal as well. They grow to about 100 mil or 10 centimetres. If you're a hermit crab, why would you live with that on your back? Well, to be honest, it provides a little bit of protection. It's not really parasitic. Oh, this is cool. Looks like this bottle has got an inhabitant. It's a butterfly blenny, slightly smaller than the normal tompot blenny, a bit shyer as well. 
their eyes are slightly different with white around the outside, that's how I can tell. And this is getting rare as well. Thank God, that's the people might remember them. You should sit in the middle of the table of a pub then, the old ashtray. Up numbers ain't looking too good at the moment, to be honest. We'll try and uh, look a little harder. The sea temperature hasn't dropped that much. It's still about 11 degrees mm -hmm. at the moment, so I'm not cold. Well, not at the bottom of the sea, I'm not. On the boat, I'm getting a bit cold. Check out this clear bottle. I love these. You look inside, and they're like a miniature diorama of the seabed. It'd be cool to put a cork in the end and take it back to the surface, but it wouldn't last long because it gets shaken up too quickly. We'll put it back. Could be someone's eggs inside that. lift this one up and keep a neck neck out the sand so someone could use it as a home I'm sensing I'm getting closer to the shipwreck but I really don't know there's a few of these around at the moment as well I'm really not scared of you either just lay there you can hit them and they're still uh still stay there and I must be getting really close now this is one of the staircases so this is the port side staircase that got blown off when the Canadian Air Force dropped all the bombs onto the ammo wreck um, you already know the funnel fell to the left and these this is the debris it obviously blew everything apart and onto the seabed and there's a bigger edible brown crab there the underside of the belly looks very pale, so it's probably malted. So I'll leave it there. There's a fair bit of debris on this. There's quite a bit of marine life here as well. And here you go, it's one of these uh, parasitic um, anemones that we were talking about before. Just here. Oh, and just to the left of it, which you'll very rarely see in 24 metres of water, is a, a shrimp. Very small shrimp. And as always, around the, this shipwreck, it's not called the ammo wreck for no reason. This could be explosive so take my time ah it isn't do you know what that is it's a roller sleeve thirteen minutes into the dive and I better check our air 150 bar plenty left that's about half a tank well that's over half a tank to be honest 120 is half a tank and there we go, shark's still there, he doesn't care. He's coiled himself a little bit, well, apart from that, he still don't care. I'm in 23 metres of water, so I don't think I'm going to actually see the shipwreck, so I must be further to the west of her. Oh, what have we found here? This looks like quite a nice bottle. And look how well it's just sitting there ready for me to have a look. So it looks like a Powell and Ricketts bottle. Looking at the uh, push up on the bottom. And it's a three part mould. It's quite nice. 18, late 1800s, 1890, 1900. Carefully put that in the bag with my massive amount of scallops. And a good thing uh, if you've watched my channel before is we tend to follow the smaller fish they normally take you back to the shipwreck but these are black bream so I really don't think they're going to take me back to the wreck but there is more wreckage here so let's explore this that looks quite modern I know exactly what that is that's the inside of an oil filter or an air filter modern bit of uh, rubbish so this 
I can only guess has been off of the ammunition wreck as well. Or the Dr. Rudolf Waffendorf. Kind of looks like it's the right era. Have a little look around here. Unfortunately though, the dust I've just kicked up is now slowly wafting down towards us. But there must be scallops around here. And hey ho, here we go. Right, the eagle-eyed viewers would have noticed actually uh, when I was looking down inside that drum there was two little red wispy antennae sticking out so I know for a fact there's a, a lobster here but before I go and film it I just want to make sure this dust clears out of the way some sort of modern tyre so let's go back now the dust is cleared let's have another little look at this wreckage was this blown off or has this been ripped off by a fishing boat Nobody knows. Let's see if we can find find this lobster inside. There it is. Now we just need to check if it's a male or a female, which isn't an easy thing to do. You got to uh, stick your hand in there and grab it. There is other ways that I can see though. Take a look at the tail. I'd say that is a buried female. The tail is almost touching the back of the carapace, which means she's protecting him. Um, especially when I stick my head in there. See the tail's tucked right up. If that was a male, they normally have their tail out ready. So I'm quite confident that's a female, and I'm not going to hassle it. If it's got berries and it's ready to uh, shed its berries, we'll let it do it. I'm not quite sure what this thing is. If anyone else knows what it is, please comment. I don't know what that is, that's a, a modern filter of some sort. Oh, I'm sw swimming the wrong way, I'm swimming the way I came, so let's turn around and we want to be going with the tide. I'm quite confident I've completely missed the shipwreck now and I'm going down on the inside, because I should have been around about 27 metres. Oh, it's just starting to find some nice scallops here now. Some decent sized ones. I got a feeling I'm going back over ground I've already been on. So I remember that coral bottle from earlier on. You can see here as well there's there's a lot of dust. So either Matt's done it or Paul's done it or I'm just swimming around in a big old circle. It's probably me to be honest. Okay, I'll pick up the, all the scallops I left last time then, shall I? Yeah, it's probably me. Here's a really old push-up. That's the bottom of a, um, a really old uh, free-blown glass bottle. Yeah, if it was me, there's loads left. It probably was me. But I'll pick them up only on the second way round. An abandoned crab pot. This can't be uh, going to the surface because you're not allowed to put crab pots in the entrance to the harbour mouth. And we have another lobster in there. Another sing single claw lobster. And he's just got the cutter, so you get a crusher and a cutter on lobsters, and they can be left handed or right handed, so they can uh, be either of the crusher on the left or the crusher on the right. That's some more scallops around here. Let's just make sure it can get out. Yep, the back door's been open. Again, this is just a piece of fishing waste. It's not ghost fishing. It's actually creating a uh, bit of a habitat there for a, a lobster to go in. Let's see if I can get my camera right down inside the hole. I have to push the lights right in. Might just about fit down. Let's see if we can get right up close to him. Some sea squirts on the neck and all sorts. This crab pot's been here for a long time. Squeeze down. Careful. See squirt. There we go. There's the lobster. I don't want to go in too far because I can see the snipper claw just opening up, getting ready to strike at me. I better leave it. Again, another lucky lobster. I 
on our boat we get certain rules uh, Richard makes all the rules and to be honest they're very sensible rules and they need to be there for our own safety and what happens if um, your divers freeze and two of you swim off further and leave one behind um, especially when in the harbour mouth with the new uh, the new ferries coming in and out what Richard would do is he'd come over and we know it's three big revs um, and then a bit of a gap and that's basically to fool you up if he does that a couple of times and you don't respond then he grabs hold of your buff and gives it three good yanks so that's what you have to do to me thought I found a bum guess what it was a roller sleeve <laughs> Ooh, yeah! It's not bad. What did I get? Oh, that looks like a pint. Imperial pint, I reckon that would say, on it? Yeah, it does, look. Around the neck. Three part mold. 1880, 1890, 1900. Anybody want a bottle? Push-up's not that big. Uh, probably say Powell and Ricketts on the bottom. P and R, yeah, Powell and Ricketts. Woo -wee. Let's get these sorted. Get my minimum amount of scallops sorted. 20 max. Oh, is that Paul or Matt that won that one? Close on the numbers. Oh. Horrible. A lot of smalls down there. A lot of smalls. It's alright for everyone else, they get a dry dive. Oh, night dive? It was a night dive. <laughs> oh well, let's get these done before we get landed. <laughs> 